Hey, what's going on? <clears throat> hey, what's going on, uh, everyone? Uh, welcome to uh, this uh, this week's episode of The Morning Show. Uh, please let me know if you can hear me, because um, I'm not all that sure if I can uh, be adequately heard. So if anybody's in the chat, please let me know. If not, we're just going to run with it the way it's the way it's going right now. Uh, but yes, um, I'd like to apologize for this last week. I haven't had um, as many videos as I would have liked to post. Um, I'm diving deeper and deeper into uh, the writing of uh, my, my comic. And um, I was stumped with, uh, I would call it the second act. Um, but I've unraveled it and I've done it in such a way where I can completely open the door to a lot of other characters and stories after this first book. Um, so I'm really happy with that. I showed um, I showed on Twitter um, a few images of some of the characters that I've designed um, in the last two or three years. And um, there were at first throwaway characters, but now I'll be able to incorporate them in the book. And that makes me really happy. I'm really excited that I'm able to um, add these characters to the lore of, uh, of my comic. And so, um, and, so, uh, and so, yeah, I'm excited for that. And uh, so I'm writing it now. Now I have to go back and give these people names. I have to, uh, you know, do the back, the backstory, uh, give background information about all of these characters that I'm creating. And, um, and yeah, so it's exciting. Uh, I have no idea how long, um, uh, how long it's going to take to get the story fleshed out, but I'm working at it. So I haven't been, uh, drawing that much <clears throat> and I haven't been putting any videos out. I've just been thinking about, um, these elements to the story. So I've been, been keeping busy with that and, um, and I'm going to continue to do that. So you probably won't see any, any art, um you probably won't see any art soon um it'll probably be a few weeks i am working on something for king cryptid uh i'm going to start that hopefully this week um i took out an ad in uh, the upcoming uh in the upcoming um what's this thing called in the i'm sorry in uh in, in, P in peter samedi's um upcoming um king cryptid comic I took an ad out uh, on uh, the Indiegogo campaign, and, uh, and so I'm going to do a full-page um, piece of art uh, for for the book. It's going to be – I'm going to draw King Cryptid. Um, I was thinking about drawing my characters, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure just yet. I want to get some things uh, situated out first before I start revealing and and, and showing off my, my stuff. Plus, I would like – not to say that Alterna is not a it's an excellent platform, but I would like to um to to have, have like the first published reveal of my characters through a book that I put out. So I'm going to hold back on that. But I am going to use that ad to promote uh, to promote the channel, to promote uh, myself as an artist. And so hopefully it'll work. And I'm going to do a, a nice uh, King Cryptid uh, splash page. So um. Yeah, and you probably won't see that at all. I'm not going to share that with you guys until uh, the, until you see it in the book. Um, so, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. So I'm sorry about it not having uh, as much fan art as I normally would. So, um, so yes. And uh, I want to say hi to my sister here. What's going on, TV? How you doing? Thank you very much for stopping by. Hey, TV, could you tell me if, I, if you can hear me? Can you hear me clearly? Could you please let me know in the chat what's going on? I think it's just you, DB. <laughs> it's just you and me today. What's going on? But yes, actually, uh, my guest is in the uh, in the back room, and um, and so yes, uh, and my guest is in the back room. And uh, just to give you some information, uh, today we're going to bring on my guest. We're going to uh, talk about his, uh, his comic. He's got two comics uh, that we're going to talk about today, and you saw them in the thumbnail, and. Um, and we're going to talk about that, talk about his influences, talk about his writing style, and then uh, and see what else we can talk about. Um, and then hopefully we might dip our toes into wrestling because uh, I know that my buddy's a, a good wrestling uh, fan. And so hopefully, hopefully we can share information about that. So without further ado, thanks. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. What's going on, General? How you doing? Welcome to the show. 
I'll bring on my guest in just a second. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's bring on my guest, uh, the acclaimed Edwin Acevedo. Let's please a big round of applause for my buddy Edwin. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. It's a pleasure to uh, to have you. Um, uh, just let me uh, allow me a few seconds to like geek out for a little bit because I've seen you many times on streams before, and uh, just talk about comics and then your passion for comic making, and then uh, having a chance to sit down with you and talk with you is just really cool. It's a, it's a real treat and honor of mine, and um, and yes, yeah, so thank you for for coming by. No, man, pleasure is mine. Uh, I'm liking, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of what you're doing, so I'm happy you're doing the YouTube channel and kind of starting your own path. Only good things from here, man. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, hopefully um, I can get uh, some more people to, to take a look at the stuff that I'm going to start making. And, uh, and yeah, so I just want to share and also shine uh, some some light on uh, other creators and um, and see what uh, projects uh, they have cooking. Um, so if, if you don't mind... Uh, uh, I'd like to ask a few questions before we start looking at the campaign. Is that is that okay? Yeah, man. Let's go. And um, I'd like to start with uh, um, uh, what got you into comics? What was your, how could you tell us uh, like your journey into comics? How did you, uh, this, what was the first comic you discovered? How, how did you, uh, how did all that come about? Yeah, so I discovered uh, comics uh, probably around like 90, 91. Uh, so, uh, you know, as a uh, young kid uh you know uh, i was into like superheroes and all that stuff but i didn't even know they made comics until one day i stumbled upon like this a uh, spinner rack at this local store and they had a uh, you know copy of spider-man and you know everybody knows spider-man so i ended up yeah. picking it up it was like uh, i think uh folks of spider-man number four or something like that and i picked it up man i just i loved it i thought it was great i i didn't have any understanding of it because it was a part four so, like, you know, I missed the first three issues. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I made up the lore in my head, and it was Spider-Man, and he's fighting uh, Sandman and, and Beetle and all these people, and I thought it was awesome. And, you know, the next time that I got a chance to go, I went looking for Spider-Man. He wasn't there, but what was there was uh, X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, but nice. he was 282, uh, the one with Storm and Bishop on the cover. And that's what really kind of made me a fan. See. Like after that, anytime I went down to the store, I had to grab a comic. It was usually X Men or Spider Man to start with, and I was hooked. Man, the characters, uh, Will Portacio's art, all that stuff, just like got the, their uh, teeth in me, and I was hooked ever since. Yeah, man. Is uh, I'm googling it. It's uh, two eighty two. I think this is the cover. Hold on, let me uh. Let me see if I can share this. This probably isn't it, but um, but this is the one that came up with 282. Oh, yeah, I have the numbers mixed up. It has been a while, but uh, I just noticed the one with Storm and Bishop on the cover. Yes, one second. Sorry. Yeah, something was happening with my camera, my bad. Um, uh, sorry. I'm having technical difficulties today, but um, but yeah, is this the issue that uh that you're referring to? No, I think it's the next one. It might be 283, but yeah, that's the start of the uh the Will Sportatio uh Bishop storyline. Yeah, so sweet. Yeah, like I was hooked on nice. to that man. Once I saw Will's art, it just blew my mind, man. The way he used to draw Archangel was just like yeah, like, mind-boggling. Like Iceman, like the characters to me never looked better. As great as Jim Lee is, even he couldn't really match what Wills did. Like he just gave them such dynamic, just like a style, man. They almost leaped out of the page. I remember as a kid just thinking, like, these are the coolest characters ever. And I still haven't changed my mind, really, you know, until, like, I started making the ace, uh, you know, to still uh, always love the X-Men. Nice. I think this is the one that you're talking about. Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, of Wills. I've been looking at his work uh, lately, and um, he I love uh, his use of blacks and how he gives shadows and depth to his characters. This is the issue, I think. Oh, let's see if it's working. I'm try it again. 
Is this the issue? Oh, <laughs> it's not loading. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah I, just, uh, I just pulled it up. Yeah, it's uh, two eighty three. It's uh, yeah, Wilson, Storm pointing at Bishop. He's like all pissed off. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I remember seeing that. I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> like, yeah, I need to, cover. I need to grab this. Nice, and um, and, and yeah. And yeah, Wilson's work is really great. Uh, he's posting a lot of his stuff now on Instagram, and I take a look at it often. And he's got really, really good work, really good use of blacks and uh, giving depth to his characters. And uh, yeah, I think um, out of the original image guys, he was probably one of the most under under underrated, like under undervalued, I guess you could say. Yeah, and sure. um, and that's awesome. So so this is what uh, got you hooked into it, and uh, you have since become a writer. Um, ha has the writing in uh, in this uh, influenced you or your style of uh, of uh, telling stories? Oh yeah, like X Men's a huge influence uh, for Volume Two. Uh, the design of the Godless, they have these kind of blue and yellow uh, kind of armor slash costumes. That's completely like a tribute to like the X Men. Uh, nice. You know, they have their blue and uh, yellow kind of regular uh, costumes during like the late eighties, early nineties. Like, I just uh, love a lot of that stuff. It's just big influence. Uh, X-Men Green Lantern is another big influence. I'm a big Jeff Johns fan, so he has, like, a huge influence on my writing and uh, storytelling and uh, world building, all that kind of stuff. Nice. You mentioned Jeff Johns. Let me take a note of this. Oh, that's awesome, man. And, um... And who, what other uh, writers would you say are inspirational in, in, in your case for, for your work, apart uh, from uh, Jeff? Yeah, like uh, trying to pull early, it. like uh, Kirk Busick, I was a big fan of, uh, like his early work. Uh, even like early Mark Wade when he was doing uh, JLA Year One. Uh, nice. You know, guys back when, you know, a lot of these guys kind of ended up falling by the wayside as far as like their quality. But like, I think like, there's something about like the early years, even with like artists, you know, like early Jim Lee, I think is like unmatched. He kind of got content with his style and how good he was. But like yeah. when you, once you follow like a guy's early career on the come up, you'll they usually do their best work, in my opinion. Like just one of the few guys or who maintain like a super high quality. But even he's dipped off in the last couple of years because. Who did you mention, Hollywood. Jeff? Yeah, Jeff John. Yeah, yeah. Once he went to like Hollywood and started doing more scripts and stuff, his comic work wasn't as good. But when he was in his prime, just doing comics only, mostly, yeah, unmatched. So a lot of these guys, uh, you know, there's like a peak and then you kind of start hitting that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Especially when you first start, when you first come out, you're all you're hungry for for that fame, and then like, yeah, and then also uh, because you're new, you don't have many people restraining your voice or anything like that, so you're able to get crazy with everything that's nice that's awesome man and um and, and yeah so today we're going to talk about also uh uh, uh the ace um uh, what can you tell us about uh about uh, the comic well uh, for people that because i'm pretty sure there's people in the uh, chat that won't know uh who who or what the ace is well how, what can you tell us about um about them about him sorry yeah so uh the ace is basically uh you know my take on like the, a lot of the early 90s uh marvel comics uh, you know, like I said, I grew up being a big Spider-Man and X-Men fan, but then later on, kind of around mid-94, 95, I started discovering a lot of, like, the side characters, characters like Dark Hawk, uh, Sleepwalker, Death's Head 2. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to bring something different to, like, when I was doing indie comics, and the Ace just kind of fit a lot of the stuff that I was into when I was, like, 13, 14. And, nice. you know, I just want to kind of update it a bit. So the Ace is basically about... Uh, this young man who's trying to figure out his purpose in life and one day he discovers the remains of a shooting star and he finds something in the wreckage that gives him the ability to transform into an armored superhero uh, but what he doesn't know is that this uh armor is like the most sought after object in the entire universe and basically he goes from this kind of normal world uh where you know everything is just kind of like there's no aliens there's no superheroes there's nothing and one day, in a snap, his life changes. This uh, alien bounty hunter shark, Akula, shows up at his front door looking to take the armor. And it kind of sets up the chain of events. Uh, volume one, Ace has to defeat Akula. And then once he does, he kind of 
ends up meeting a whole bunch of new aliens that pop up on his uh on his life and now he's gonna kind of figure out who he can trust who can he trust yeah. uh, you know we pick up the action we go off into space and you really kind of wrap a lot of things off that we set up in volume one we kind of take it up a notch for volume two nice are you adding um or, or what could we say would uh, is different um from uh, volume uh two to volume from volume one to volume two um, is there a, a bigger page count, um, introduction of new characters? What can uh, people look forward to in, uh, in volume two? Yeah, there's definitely a slight, uh, it's got like four more pages. So it's just like a slight more uh, pages. Uh, mostly, you know, I just think the writing is better. The art's better. Uh, you know, like we do introduce more characters. Basically, volume one is just the Ace and Akula. Uh, and we have a little introduction to Angelique. This one has Ace, Akula, has the Godless, which is this like, alien uh, strike force that basically shows up to try and take the ace back to their home world to meet their uh, emperor then we have uh, angelique makes her full debut and we just kind of like i said we just ramp up everything the action the story we go off into space uh and we kind of get introduced to, to this bigger world that uh, david has no idea about he kind of learns how kind of sets up you know i just finished the script for volume three and it sets up really like you know, even like a crazier volume three where kind of the stakes Sweet. get raised and all that. So, yeah, it's just continuing the story. I try to make each volume, you know, kind of go up from the next one. And like I said, volume two is kind of like that progression. I think, like I said, the art, as as part as I am on volume one, I think the art is just like even better on volume two. I think all the artists have leveled up. Ken Alice has gotten better. Sweeney's gotten better. How's gotten better. It just makes nice. my job easier when these guys are just like delivering incredible pages. So I'm super pumped about it. I actually have like a proof copy of it. I'm been having Sweet. some printer issues and stuff. Let's see if I can grab yeah, one. No here. problem at all. Yeah, while uh, while while everyone's looking for that, I want to say hi to, air, to people in the chat that showed up. Uh, Ardvark is here. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Uh, Hicks Villain is here. What's going on, man? How you doing? The general. Salute the general always. Um says we won that giveaway the other day uh edwin i had to leave before the stream was over who won that I, giveaway he says yeah I'm sorry. so uh, it was backer number 58 so 58 so, yeah, what was the prize good. uh they won an original page of art from volume one ah yeah yeah like Alice, yeah nice yeah I saw, I saw that i have um i was gonna ask you about that <laughs> hold on one second um there's a picture that i got yeah this picture here this is uh you posted this on Twitter and you're um, offering original art from volume one to a, a lucky backer and it's backer number fifty eight who got this. Yep. Nice. Did they get to choose which page they wanted? Uh no, I I uh, chose the one, but it's chose a really random nice one. one. It's got a. Uh, it basically has a cooler uh, facing off against Ace, so nice. you get a nice you get a nice kind of quality one. So sweet. Yeah, and uh, if anybody is interested, I do have a handful left uh, of original art pages, so you can slide into nice. my DMs if you'd like one. I'll send it out to you. It's very reasonable pricing, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember these scenes from the book. Yeah, good stuff. I like that you were able to uh, um, include uh, actually, uh, I gave away personal that, life in there also. What yeah, happened? I, like, I gave away that top one on the right there, the one where Akula's running. Let's see if I can pinpoint to that one. Uh, this this top one here. Yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, this is the one that's sweet. Yeah, you have a cool other attacking ace. It's a great page. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember these scenes from volume one. Yeah, good stuff. And, <clears throat> and I like that you were able to also um, add a personal touch to it with him and his relationship with his uh with his mom. But without getting into too much uh <laughs> spoiler territory for the backers out there. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's aw awesome stuff, man. And uh and see, so I want to say hi to him. Uh, a killer, a killer confirmed X Man. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> um, oh yeah, everyone's talking about the yellow blue armor. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Aquila versus oh, a yeah, brother. Yeah, that Let's that make makes <laughs> that makes sense. That and that's a good uh. Oh, and they have similar sounds on in their names. That would work. Um. Say, so I want to say hey to B A. What's going on, man? Good to see you. Uh, Odin, always a pleasure. What's going on, Odin? How you doing? And um, and my sister is here, always supporting. So nice. And um, and yeah, man. So uh, so more pages, more characters, uh, more story. 
And um, I don't want to jump into that just yet. Because you also have a second comic, but we'll get into that in just a moment. And, um, and yeah, so what was the influence uh, for Aquila? You, you mentioned earlier that you that it was influenced from the earlier comics. And this your um your homage, of, of, we can say, to, to that. Is there anything specific that influenced, like, the design or uh, who he is as a person? Um, yeah elements from uh, um that, that could have inspired uh, the creation of of uh of the ace uh for like a cooler he's just uh you know I, I needed a character you know i came up with the idea of like a bounty hunter kind of like character someone who would kind of like track down ace and kind of i would need like a backstory for it so the idea of him being a bounty hunter him coming to like earth him facing yeah. off with ace so the that idea was kind of early on uh, it's actually thanks to passion for drawing that we kind of settled in on the shark alien Sweet. uh the idea of like this giant talking shark for like a visual would just be like cool and then like his yeah. attitude is kind of like you know i want him to be kind of like almost this russian gangster almost kind of nice. like very kind of like you know the way he speaks is kind of like funny because it's like translated from his alien language to like the yeah. human so so it's kind of funny and then you know, like uh, when I just started writing him, it was just fun. Like he's just like it's a character that could basically do anything, yeah. and kind of does. He kind of he's his own like chaotic being. Uh, you know, I think the biggest influence that I can I kind of settled down for him is uh Spike uh, during Buffy when he ends up becoming kind of like a semi good guy, but not really. Yeah. You know, he's kind of like on that edge before he goes like full good guy, where he just kind of like oh, he'll still kill people and stuff. But you know. He, there's there's like a charm to him, you know. He's, he you exactly. kind of end up rooting for him, and he ends up kind of becoming one of probably like next exactly. to Buffy. He's probably the most beloved like Buffy character. So yeah, no, yeah, definitely. So so w without getting into too many spoilers, also could we also see like a, a like a potential like a, a Kula antihero working side by side with the Ace? Uh, I mean, you could see it maybe like limited. He he's not exactly like he, he's nice. after himself, so he's gonna do what's best for him. Uh, always, but you know, like I said, for yeah. like a maybe a short partnership won't be bad. But in the end, he's gonna be a cooler, so you know yeah, you can't really yeah. trust him too too much. So. Nice, yeah. And this also, uh, and it was a a breath of fresh air to see Shark, uh, a Shark villain or a Shark character at, at the time when you were promoting the Ace uh, last year, because last year and the year before that, I think all CG was nothing but werewolves. So, yeah. so getting a a Shark in there was nice. Yeah, man. That's I, awesome. started, I started the shark wave, you know. It's like, hey, let, yeah, hey, yeah. Right, let's go with the sharks now. Let's just see. Yeah, yeah. And awesome. I've seen a couple of pop up. You, you might see in the next couple of years. I know some people are working on some shark stuff. So, yeah, yeah. You know, let it, let it be known over. that it started with with uh, with right. Edwin. <laughs> the shark wave. Just hashtag it. <laughs> yeah, I dig that. And um, and so uh, and yeah, so yeah, so we can take a look here. Uh, I'm going to share uh. Uh, the campaign page. Um, let's see, let's take a look at the top. This is the the, the beginning, and uh, here we can see the the characters uh, of the of the team, the the space team, and it's got the blue and uh, the blue and yellow reminiscent of the X Men from back in the day. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, and um, and then we got a Kula, and uh, and then some fan art. Or not, I'm sorry, not fan art, but this is a, a art from uh, HK. And I'm sorry, from uh, Mr. Beacon. And yeah, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Draws it, and then Beacon does the colors. Uh, so, so hey, it's okay. gonna be a, a nice print that's available on the campaign still. So nice. Can, uh, grab that up along with the comics. A nice bundle. Sweet. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, speaking of uh, of the artist uh, attached to uh, to uh, the Ace. How did you uh, come across uh, your your artist uh, uh, Canales and um, and the others that that you've uh, how did you uh, come across them? Uh, you know, I got friends yeah. with Canales a while ago. Uh, you know, uh, through Twitter and stuff. He he was big on Twitter, and we kind of ran in the same circles. And I ended up hiring him to do like a commission for the Ace, just something personal for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I really love the way he drew the character. Like he, from the original design, he kind of sleeked it up a bit. He kind of just kind of like trimmed a lot of the fat from the original design. He just kind of, the way it, it, he, he looks like basically the way you see the ace now, that's like Canalis, 
main yeah. influence. Like, you know, the pieces were there before that. So like, you know, but can I kind of like trimmed it? And then, you know, I had like a different artist that was going to draw volume one, but he had to drop out because he had family uh, stuff going on. Uh, so, you know, I was friends with Canales. I'd already hired him and stuff. And I was a fan of his work. So I just reached out to him. I was like, hey, man, I don't know if you got free time. I know you're working on some books, but, you know, like, uh, you know, like, you know, I gave him the pitch, basically told him what the ace was about. And he hit me back up. He's like, hey, you had me at the giant talking alien shark. <laughs> and I was like, all right. So that's kind of how that came together. Uh, how I discovered him through uh, Phil Diaz. He worked nice. with him on Lost Pages. And, uh, you know, I, I had some logos and some stuff done by him. And he, his art is so good. Like, he's so underrated. People have no idea his range and stuff. And he just blew me away, man. Every time he, I hire him to do something, he just takes it from, like, a 7 or 8 to, like, a 10. Like, he, he's fantastic. And, you know, like I said, I look forward to working with him for a long time, dude. Super talented. And then Sweeney's, I, like, I knew Sweeney's from, like, the moment I got into, like, Twitter and indie comics and comics gate and all that stuff. Like, you know, I was I was, a, I was with him when he was doing up his oddity character and stuff. Like, he, like he's the nice. one who did, like, the original rough design for the Ace. And, uh, you know, uh, so me and him were friends. And, and you know, mm -hmm. yeah, so getting him to work on, like, the, the backup uh, Epilogue story, you know, it was, like, a no-brainer. Like, do this insanely talented so yeah nice. man the whole thing just kind of came together and you know that's uh, doing great work right now yeah yeah the, yeah because the art is uh really good i mean you've also had uh people um like mike mcmahon come on for uh for prince uh you got um uh, joe ball also doing a uh, uh, prince and so the the quality of the art is there and you can see it here also in case anybody's wondering the the cool the the, the badass in the middle that's uh ace and then you got Akula on the right, the, the the shark character, and then we have Angelique on the left. Is that correct? That's Am right. I pronouncing your name right, Angelique. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah, nice. And yeah, so these are the characters that we're going to look forward to uh, in this uh, in this new um, in this new comic of the Ace. And yeah, if and I'm that's not actually, mistaken, uh, that's actually like a, a bonus for anybody who signed up for the mailing list for Volume Two. They're going to get like this oversized sticker by how sweet. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be really I just uh, ended up placing the order with uh, with uh, the DS brothers. Uh, they do a lot of prints and stickers and stuff. So I'm just waiting to get the package by the next couple of days. So nice. that'll be cool to kind of get all this like stuff in. I'm getting a little closer and closer, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's still not too late to uh, get uh, get in on the campaign. The campaign is uh, currently uh, in demand, as you can see here, so you can um, be uh, you know pick up all of this good stuff, and um, and yeah, and I'm excited and I'm kind of bummed out that there's no more uh, Akula Slam buddies. <laughs> ah, yeah, they sold yeah, that. Stuff, they sold yeah, that quick. Is, yeah, you know, who knows? We might be uh, bringing some more for uh, Volume Three. Yeah, yeah, because um, another run of it. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, because that promotional uh, video that the Diaz brothers did for that, that was just awesome. Yeah, it's fantastic. Awesome. Right? That's one of my favorite things, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, see, I want to say also hi to 80s. What's going on, 80s? Yeah, thank you, 80s. Um, man. I, I, I was, appreciate you backing. Yeah, yeah. I was always uh, <laughs> I'm always a fan of the 80s. I was listening to the 80s music today, and I was thinking about him <laughs> today. It's like, yeah, because, um, yeah, the 80s, I think, were a really great, great decade. And um, and he says he says I love ruthless villains. Yeah, in general says not finally not a werewolf. <laughs> and uh, uh, general has a question here. He says, uh, "What's Ace Ace's morality? Does he believe in not killing, or is he still figuring it out?" Yeah, he's definitely figuring it out. Uh, anybody who read uh, Volume One knows the the last panel. Uh, on the uh, the main story ends with Ace having his blade at Akula's mm -hmm. throat, and basically, uh, you know, kind of find out whether he ends up finishing him off or not in the in volume two. But it's the idea of like this kid, you know, he's a young man. He's like 21. He just turned 21, you mm -hmm. know. So he he hasn't really figured out what it's like to be a man and where he really stands on everything. And you know, through him discovering this armor and going on this crazy adventure he kind of ends up getting those answers he kind of yeah he's put in all these different situations and he kind of ends up really end up 
figuring out how to become a man and what kind of person he wants to be. Uh, now that he's got this responsibility. So, like I said, we kind of try to mix a lot of the uh, the action, the adventure, the, the aliens, all that fun stuff. But at the core, we still want to tell a story about a young guy trying to figure stuff out. So, hopefully, uh, nice. you know, people come along for the ride. Like I said, super like affordable book. Uh, you know, that uh, you'll get a lot of extra stuff. We'll get prints, cards, stickers, all this other kind of fun stuff when you back it. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, uh, you know, everybody will join us on the ride and hopefully we can yeah. get this to 10 figures, uh, to 10 K, which is, I, I would love to to be able to get it there. Yeah, and then there's also this catch up tier um, for the people that are that want to dive into the story. Uh, you know, you can get volume one and volume two, and both of them come with, <clears throat> with new covers. Is that, is that correct? Uh, yeah, the volume one second printing comes with an awesome Joe Ball cover. Uh, you know, like I said, dude's incredible. And, uh, you know, he actually colored this himself. So uh, you oh, get nice. like an amazing, two amazing covers. Uh, the Pat Maxton volume two cover is incredible. And yeah, the, the Joe nice, Ball nice. volume uh, one second printing is equally amazing. So yeah, this just, is the. Super happy to work with these guys. It's like, they're incredible. And just always blow me away anytime they, they hand me uh, art. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joe Ball is <clears throat> really an excellent artist, and um, yeah, he he does a lot of great work. And um, yeah, there's no there's no exception in this case. Yeah, that's awesome. Look at that. Yeah, actually, uh, I own the original to this. It's hanging up on my wall. It's uh, people have tried to buy it from me. I was like, nah, it's, this is this is staying in my collection. This is yeah, that's too too good, good man. This <laughs> is a genius. Go check out Death 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 if uh, if you haven't. Also, yeah. And um, yeah, we also have Big Boy Robo. What's going on, man? Two great. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, old brother. And um, and yeah, man, that's awesome. And then uh, also, apart from um, from uh, from the Ace Volume Two, you have another book in the works also. And um, uh, could you tell us what the name of that other book is? And then uh, tell us uh, the story about it. Sure. Uh... So my next project is, is a 12-page uh, ash can called Bloodbone. Uh, it's uh, going to be a little different uh, from, you know, stuff that I've done before. Um, not crowdfunding this. I'm actually uh, funding this through PayPal. I'm taking a page from uh, Joe Sontag when he did the Reaper Destroyer <coughs> ash can. Uh, Bloodbone uh, yeah, yeah. is basically, uh, you know, it's basically a test run. It's basically issue one, even though it's an ash can. Uh, basically tells a story of this man who ends up having to become a vigilante to clean up his city, which has been overrun by criminals. Uh, so Blood Bones, basically this uh, really big, powerful kind of like, you know, just destructive force. And, uh, you know, he's basically, uh, you know, he ends up leaving his hometown, you know, right after college and kind of experiencing life. And when he returns, a couple of years later, you know, he, he comes back to a place that he doesn't recognize. You know, his hometown used to be this beautiful kind of metropolis where people had hope and, you know, there were good people around and it wasn't really filled with crime or anything. And when he comes back, you know, he, he comes back as these people scared and, you know, people are suffering and he ends up finding out that these criminal element has basically bought the town. They've basically taken over and wow. there's nobody to stop him. So he basically... You know, he developed all these skills when he was away, and he's kind of used them now to, like, like clean up the city uh, the only way he knows how. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun, kind of action-packed, bloody, blood bone pulls, no punches with criminals. He's looking to just, like, break, kill, and destroy. That's uh, awesome. You know, you know, I call it a little bit part Bane, part Punisher, part Arrow, uh, the TV show. You know, nice. he's very, kind of very driven guy who who you know you know he's not there to play around he's there to break bones and then you know clean up his city and he basically you know the reason he kind of like uh, goes on his first kind of outing is because you know he's basically uh, he doesn't know how far up things go he doesn't know who's behind this organization or anything so he basically has to basically be a pain on their ass until they they basically he gets on their radar and he can start getting some answers so basically the first kind of story that we're selling is he ends up breaking up this meeting 
uh, this criminal organization is having. He just basically just tears through everybody. And he basically, once he's kind of done uh, his thing, he basically becomes on the, the organization's radar. You know, nice. Like, All right, we got to start taking care of this guy. And, you know, I kind of proceeds. You know, if it does well, I would love to kind of keep telling that story of Bloodbone kind of and then facing off with this organization and kind of getting deeper into his, some of his backstory and stuff and really, but mostly the Ash can is just pure action, just him tearing through villains and, you know, it's just like fun, like great art by Donald, just a really kind of like completely different thing that I've done from the Ace or anything else. Yeah. Uh, I'm super pumped about it. Like, uh, I think, I think it's really good. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll have a quick turnaround on this. I'm talking to a printer now to see if we can get these Ash cans done up. So hopefully... You know, maybe uh, in the next like month or two, I'll you know I'll have, awesome. like, at least a proof copy of it. Sweet. And and the uh, the pages, uh, the interiors are, are going to be black and white. Or are they going to be colored? No, yeah, they're going to be black and white. Uh, Donald's uh, blacks and all that stuff is just yeah. amazing. You know, the the colors yeah. popping without any color. So yeah, just uh, nice. Yeah, I want to take a look at some of the. Yeah, this is some of the art from the from the ash can, I believe. Yeah, so you see, like, yeah, that stuff is great. You know, the, the detail, the blacks, the way it's, it's, yeah. it just stands out. You know, you, you get to see super detail and everything. So, yeah, yeah the looming threat right here. Huh? Yeah, it's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And, um, um, what made you choose uh, Donald as the artist for, for, for this? Uh, um, what is it about his style that, that you thought could work well with, uh, with his character? I mean, you know, I know Donald. We were friends. Uh, he's done a lot of work for me. He did the Volume 1 Ace cover. Uh, he's done some other stuff. I don't think people have even seen that he's done for me. And, he, you know, his style just fits what Blood Bone represents. It's kind of like over-the-top, bloody action, but it's also got some humor in it, you know? Yeah. Donald makes it send some humor, so it's, it doesn't take itself too, too seriously. Uh, it's not something I, I really want. I'm not somebody who kind of, you know, thinks comics should be like, with the super super tone you know it's like it's yeah. you know it's fun it's over the top it's also like really great art and i just think everything about blood bone and like i said when i pitched it to him he was he was totally down with it he, he couldn't wait to do more pages and like i said we did like 12 pages and stuff and i was like you know what people got to see this this is kind of dope and so i had it yeah uh, already had it like lettered so like i said yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess oh, that's awesome man. Project, um, man. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, hyped for uh, Bloodbone because uh, he's he's in that uh, he's in that section of like the the big the big uh, the big buff characters like uh, for example Crimson and now we got Pit you know and then um and and I also for my comic I also have a big guy also and and it's just great you know having a, a big hero like that a big uh, character like that um, there's so much you you can do with it so much violence so much you know uh, grit. And and the art also is just a, a character light that lends itself to get drawn in in a, in very very uh, um, dramatic visual way and it's uh, it's great and I, I'm, I'm excited for it um, and it, it looks good I like the, the street greedy the street level greediness to it which is uh, which is great um, and yeah as you were saying it's completely the opposite from uh, from Ace because Ace is more out in space and then uh, and then um, and then Bloodbone is more uh, on on uh on the earth and in, in the streets and uh yeah it's great and uh who um who who is the artist for this uh for this piece this piece looks great also it's yeah so this is the uh cover for the ash can this is by uh ricardo jaime uh, nice so yeah he just blew yeah, he me killed away here. When, when, yeah. uh, gave him the idea kind of gave him those three characters that he's fighting are are in the ash can they're actually characters that uh i want to introduce and like if you know, like I said, if everything goes well with the Ash Can, in like what yeah. uh, official issue one, I'd love to introduce those characters. So they're not just there randomly; they're they're there for a reason. Kind of like uh, give you a peek of like what you know, kind of some of the bigger world. You know, like I said, the idea yeah. of like Bloodbone facing off against you know he has these specific threats and kind of specialists that he faces. That so. Just a, it's a cool world. I'm um, kind of digging, getting into it. You know, like I said, different from the Ace. And uh, yeah, hopefully people go check it out. You can subscribe to the uh, mailing list right now. Uh, anybody who does uh, and backs the book, 
uh, I guess the, we'll get a special trading card. And this is the, the color for the piece. Nice. Just love how he uh, jump out, you know. Uh, he wanted to keep like his, his colors a lot more simple, the white. Yeah. So we like that gray kind of charcoal, you know, yeah. getting him. Especially, you know, like the idea of the visual is like, you know, uh, his name Bloodbone, you know, it's like you know, breaking bones, too, yeah. kind of drawing blood, yeah. and then you that's know, the perfect. idea of seeing the visual with his like his white turns to red, yeah, you know, once perfect. he's done. So, that kind of like gives him like an extra little yeah, that's to awesome. it. So, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, so also, fun, man. yeah, also the um, the white and the and the the grayish and then the skin color, also like when blood gets on it, it's like super obvious, yeah. and then it's it's uh. It makes it pop, and uh, it's really good. I, I, I really, really have a. I'm, re I'm really excited about uh, Bloodbones. Really, really cool character, and um, yeah, it has a grifter feel to it. Yeah, like the. I'm assuming the character because of the the face. I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. That's yeah, the, the the grifter like mask. Uh, that yeah, was definitely something that came up with early on. I just think like, I had the idea of maybe doing something like like an official kind of mask, but then it will make him look too much like Bane. I figured. Yeah. So the idea of like giving him the free hair, the more kind of looser mask, since he is a vigilante, you know, this is That's like, awesome. this, you know, like even like his, his has got like a singlet, you know, he's not like an yeah. official like costume. It's more like a come like a DIY kind of thing. Like his <laughs> yeah. whole thing's like more DIY. So that kind of like, it yeah, just kind of made sense when I was coming up with it, you know? So I, th I think it works, especially like, you know, the fact that, you know, he doesn't really use weapons unless, you know, like if he sees a sword and stuff, and you know somebody's gonna go at him with the sword, he can take the sword and stab somebody. But he kind of prefers doing it like hand to hand. So like you know, That's I awesome. could I could feel like I could kind of borrow the mask design a bit and wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah, That's awesome. I dig it. I dig it. Dig it. And um, anybody uh, and any if anybody is um is interested, I'm gonna show you this off also. Uh, here, here is uh, just a quick rundown of what uh, the ash can entails. Um, let me just give you a second. Um, yeah, so just hit up Edwin in the DMs, and you'll be able to uh, to get yourself a copy of this ash can. And there's prices for uh, U.S. and there's also international prices. And yeah, so this is what you. Uh, this is the price. And for this, uh, they get um, the the copy of the ash can, and that's. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kinda, I kind of want to see kind of what the order's like. You know, I do okay. have some other art and stuff that we can do something with, but it just has to make sense financially, so I don't want to promise anything before yeah, yeah. we kind of... But yeah, you know, depending if we get a lot of orders, then, you know, you, you might get some a nice bonus with it, you know. just has to kind of make sense, especially since I'm in the middle of, like, the ace, trying to get that fulfillment. So I, I didn't want to over-promote, pro, pro, you know, promise with this one. I just wanted to keep it simple. Uh, as nice. much as I could. So, I did want to answer General Piggy's uh, question earlier. Yeah. Uh, he asked if Bloodbone and Ace are oh, yeah. in the same universe. Yeah. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're completely oh. separate universes. Uh, the thing about like Ace, the st the reason that the story is special is because uh, in the world of David, uh, there's no superheroes or anything. Okay. Like there's, he's just like a completely normal world, and then he gets introduced to like this alien presence that he didn't even know existed. So I didn't want to like muddy that with like introducing another hero and then like okay. people who, like a lot of the people from Bloodbone don't have like typical like what you consider superpowers. They're more like enhanced humans, you know, like a lot of like kind of kind of think like maybe Spider Man slash Daredevil rogues, you know, yeah. they have like enhanced technology, uh, you know, like scientific experiments, stuff like that. So it's just like a completely, and I didn't want to kind of like muddy uh, the universes. So I just wanted to have them both separate. Uh, Sweet. You know. yeah, I'm kind of bummed out by that. <laughs> it was expected like a blood bone ace at cross. Yeah, hey, I mean, that, that could always happen, you know, like, you know, there's, there, there are multiverses, but, you know, as that far is as like true. Yeah, their yeah. main universe is not. Yeah. And yeah, and I guess you could also say, you no, know, it's up to the fans. Like, if they would love to see that, and there's a, a great reception to that, then yeah, everything, anything can happen. But, um, can but yeah, happen. so uh, to the people in the chat, it is up to you guys uh, to make it happen. Please uh, uh, back a Bloodbone. Um, let's get as many uh, copies of, of this as we can, so um, so we can convince Edwin that we need to have this, you know, as 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 his own book. And um, 
and so uh and see so, yeah, i also wanted to say hi uh, there's more people in uh let's see uh i can see it the mask in the air but with the body of maul yeah well, so what's going on at uh, octagon comics uh, what's going on? Uh, Chauncey's in the chat. What's going on? How you doing, man? And Chauncey asks, if Bloodbone fought Creech and won, how would he win? Well, that's an interesting question. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure what Creech's powers are. Uh, so I would kind of have either. to know. Uh, you know. You know, like Wait, to me, Bloodbone specifically fights kind of villains. <laughs> people who are like uh really bad guys like he's got like a specific code for that so unless you know he caught creeps doing something that he thought would merit a beat down <laughs> he probably wouldn't fight him so like i said if he was up to some shady stuff then he'd get his ass up <laughs> you know Definitely. it's kind of like his code you know like i said there's a lot of like punisher in him you know he's only targets like truly despicable like criminals you know nice. like uh like i said that the, the the kind of like organization that uh he's dealing with is like these are really bad guys like they're killers they're they're hurting people and stuff so like you don't have to feel bad when bloodbone just like smashes <laughs> through them you know so like he, he does have a specific code he's not just gonna fight to fight uh so yeah hopefully that's that gave awesome. you an answer yeah. yeah that's awesome and does that, does that would that also would that also mean that um He's fighting villains and he's uh, defending uh, the the good. Is there a sweet spot to, to Bloodborne? Like, does he have like a character like, for example, with Pit uh, Tim? Uh, does he have like that that sort of uh, innocence uh, portrayed with someone uh, at, at all? Would you say? Uh, not yet. Uh, like I said, I'm still kind of world building a lot of stuff. So, yeah. like you know, like once he kind of, I start really digging into Bloodbone's past. Like I have like the basic outline of it. That's how I write. I basically do like an outline, and then I start filling his stuff up as kind of I start locking down with the Ace. So like with Ace, like I came up with a lot of different things ahead of time. So I have like notes and stuff, mm -hmm. and then once I get down to actually writing out the full script to Canalis, I kind of have to start kind of like trimming everything and then kind of you know piecing everything more together so like once we'd get into like a blood bone number one i'd really kind of start getting more into like the 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 more kind of like what's his current world like who who's his friends who's his foe all that kind of stuff and kind of really uh digging deep into it so that's awesome and have you um what would you say would be your experience in like promoting two projects at once uh do you feel that this has taken away uh, uh light and spotlight from from Ace, or, or 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 has it has it helped, or what 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 could you tell us in regards to that? Because um, many people, for example, they they promote one comic, they pro they work on one campaign, and that one campaign is uh, is 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 incredibly demanding. Um, and so, in your case, you have two uh, two IPs um, work at the same time. How, what can you tell us uh, in regards to that? Like, how how has that been? Uh, I would not recommend it. <laughs> you know, uh, this all happened by happenstance mostly. Uh, uh, like I said, I, I've been having some printer problems, so I actually expected to have in all my copies of the Ace like a uh, like a month ago. <laughs> so oh, nice. you know, okay. it's also timing kind of ended up pushing everything back. I thought okay. I'd at least have all the copies and everything by the end of September. Uh, so, you know, it kind of like, I figured, all right, I can start promoting in October once I have everything in, in like, September, but then the printer issues kind of delayed everything. So, uh, you know, that's also kind of part. And also like, once I kind of started promoting Blood Bone, it's kind of like, all right, well, it's already, <laughs> it's kind of out there already. So <laughs> you can't exactly pull it back. You can't pull back, people yeah. are excited, you know, people are excited. They're, I'm getting like tons of retweets and comments uh, anytime I post, post yeah. any art. So I'm like, it is what it is at this point, you know, yeah. you kind of gotta rock with it and the fact that this isn't like crowdfunding this is it's, it's an ash can it's not gonna have extra stuff that i have to like buy and get shipped and stuff so, so it does make it a little easier but i wouldn't recommend it I, I would try to avoid this in the future but you know like i said i'm excited for the project people seem into it and like i said ace little by little we're starting to get there with everything so you nice. know I'll, I'll make Sweet. it work, but yeah, I'll definitely try to avoid this in the future if I can. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, I mean, know, well, it's it, not it, enough hours in the day, man. Like, especially yeah. hours, like a nine to five, 
not actually nine to five, but you know, the idea of working like six days a week and stuff. So it's just, it's just a little, it's a little rough. Yeah. Yeah. Not definitely. No, and uh, no, it's, um, I mean, the, uh, everything fits to, to what you can handle it. Like if you can handle two campaigns, excellent. Great. No, the more the merrier. No, but, um, but, but yeah, like you're saying in this case, no, it's a little bit, a little bit difficult. So it'd probably be better to, uh, space it out a little bit. No, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's great. We're all, we're all for it and we're excited, um, for Bloodbone and, um, and yeah, man, just take a look at the art. I know Donald is on this, so he's gonna. The interiors are gonna be great. Um, and what I what I can say also about uh, Donald's interiors is that there's a lot of uh, emotion, a lot of emotion here, a lot of good stuff uh, to uh, you know, to to dig into. Look at that, great piece, man. And, um, and yeah, genuine comics is here. How you doing, man? Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody stopping by. And um, and yeah, so please uh, hit up uh, Edwin on the DMs because uh, so you can get yourself a copy of um, of Bloodbone and also get uh, the Ace Volume Two, Volume Two. And um, and so af after uh, Volume Two wraps up, uh, what what's what's next for for, for Edwin? Well, what's next? Um, what's next in line? Next is to hopefully start working on volume three at the start of the year. Uh, you know, like I said, I just finished the script, uh, you know, uh, kind of setting up everything. I got to do some of like the epilogue stuff, which, yeah, you know, probably I'll be done probably by the end of the month with that. And then, you know, like I said, I already have kind of Alice kind of locked in for January. Uh, so we'll, we'll be ready to get started on the main story. You know, probably campaign maybe fall around the fall. Okay. And then we'll awesome. kind of see what the reception for Bloodbone is and follow on. And then that, that, and then that will be uh, scheduling for next year, I would, I would assume. Yep. Bloodbone. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably looking at like uh, end of the year for Bloodbone. Ah, oh, nice. Sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. And Octagon says Bloodbone's mask is super cool. I always loved that kind of mask in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, it's not um used a lot, um, but it is it is visually uh appealing, you because know? yeah, the, that mask can go anywhere, yeah. and it, it it's not static at all. And um and Chauncey says, "Wish I caught this earlier." Definitely rewatching Bloodbone looks dope. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Bloodbone is a is a very uh is an awesome character. Um, yeah, and I'm actually gonna be doing a, a launch stream uh, October fifth on uh lord crackhead jeremy's channel so everybody nice. wants to join us there for like the official launch of the uh pre-orders so yeah sweet yeah so be sure to check out um lord crackhead and his channel um yeah, i don't have this information in the link but i'll i'll uh so i can put it up i guess and um let's see uh let's see what other questions i'm gonna have and uh, uh, your your writing process uh, for for uh, well, I I can guess we can assume that uh, safely assume that the Ace is an ongoing series. Like you're gonna have Ace uh, four, five, seven, and um, uh, and for the moment you've revealed to us that you have uh, well, volume one's finished, volume two is uh, wrapping up, and then you're working on uh, volume three. How do you approach uh, the writing process for for this series? Do you do you um you just take it one one issue at a time? Do you outline things? How far in advance do you plan? Uh, how do you approach uh, the, the writing for um for uh, the Ace? Yeah, so I have like a a soft outline for like where I want to kind of take each character and kind of what I want to tell in each issue. So it's not until like I actually kind of sit down with it and really kind of take a look at the notes and everything where, where I kind of mold it and then kind of like because volume uh, three you know I had like a rough idea for where it was going but it wasn't until I actually start writing and start you know setting up the pages and start getting it ready to send to Canales that it, everything comes together but yeah it is an ongoing uh, you know I do want to tell I think I have like infinite stories that i can tell with the ace and kind of where i want to take him and a lot of the characters so it's something that you know as long as people can support it i would love to do uh, but you know if like it doesn't then you know i do have other ideas like i said Bloodbone is something that you know i had been working on behind the scenes for like over a year you know nice. since i had donald work on it 
you know, I do a lot of stuff like behind the scenes and stuff. So like, you never know when you might see one of my projects pop up. Like I had a short story in Alterna that I would nice. love to do like a follow up to like a story about these Vikings who get washed up in the strange uh, city. Uh, so yeah, it just kind of all depends on kind of like, you know, what the support is and kind of where, you know, where we're kind of like, you know, I don't want to just do stuff for me. I kind of want to see yeah. where, where the people are and if they're feeling it, then we'll, we'll keep going. Like it's, it's, you know, something that once I kind of get into the, the, the world of the ace and all that stuff, it's like super motivating. Like, you know, I yeah. start writing and I'm like, oh man, there's so much more I could do. Like now I got to wait till volume four to do the rest of this, you know? So, so it's, it's, you know, I can, I have fun with it. It's just about kind of making it make sense. And, you know, uh, hopefully nice. like one, one ace a year is what I'm kind of shooting for. Uh, you know, and then maybe doing like a side project or like a little ash can or something for something else. Uh, I don't want to like just put out 15 projects or anything that I don't think you do your best work that way. And, you yeah. know, I try to get as much of this stuff beforehand as I can to make it a little easier on promoting and stuff. So Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So would you say that you have um, like a Marvel method approach to it or or are you, is it every is everything scripted out? Does does for example does Canales get a full script when you when you uh when he starts with this or yeah Canales uh, gets a full script, uh panel Sweet. breakdowns, dialogue, the whole thing, but he always knows like I always tell him like you know, this is kind of my guide map. If yeah. you can make it better, do it. Go for it. And nice. he'll, he'll, sometimes he'll send me something. I'll be like, nah, I kind of like it my way better. So he'll go, he'll do it my <laughs> way sometimes. So he'll, he'll get me something new that I didn't expect. And I'll be like, that's it. Keep going. So, you know, it's all about like a, he's earned that trust with me. Uh, you know, yeah, because like so. yeah, three issues in. So you guys are, are getting uh, are uh, gelling a, a lot better than, than at first. No, no. Yeah, no. I think like I'm super happy with his work. On volume one, but I think his work on volume two is even better. I think like he's gotten really comfortable with the characters in the world and the setting and everything. I think it's right mm. up his alley. So yeah, awesome. that's really cool. Sounds great, man. Yeah, yeah, to answer the question, uh, the name Blood yeah. Bones actually Phil DES came up with it. Uh, oh, nice. So yeah, it's uh, the idea of kind of like we were joking about a lot of like '90s characters with the name Blood. Yeah. You know, so, so blood wind, uh, blood rafe, you know, all these kind of blood names and stuff. Uh, so we just kind of like we came up with the idea of like blood bone. And it started off as a joke. And then, you know, next thing you know, uh, there's a full now comic. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just Sweet. one of those things, you know. No, that's that's the beauty of uh, creating and the beauty of working with other creators and interacting and talking that one little thing can snowball into a into a series and and into into comics and yeah it's great it's great yeah, very much for the um, ace like the idea of originally just like thinking about this guy who discovers like a shooting star and just kind of like this rough idea of something just like and just kind of taking it from there and just kind of you know creating this whole world now and so it's pretty crazy awesome man and yeah, and Odin says, um, yeah, he's going to be there on uh, Jeremy's uh, channel on the 5th for the launch of uh, Blood Bone. So please be sure to catch that. Uh, subscribe to um, to Jeremy's channel. Go check it out. And um, and yeah, so we're nearing uh, uh, the hour. And um, uh, Edwin, if you could tell us, like, where can we catch you um, apart from uh, or yeah, on what social media are, are you on that we can get in touch with you? Yeah, the easiest place to get in touch with me is Twitter. I'm at Edwin Aces. Uh, you know, I'm always posting uh, anytime you want to see like art or sneak peeks or news or anything. Uh, just follow me there. That's where everything kind of goes first and then it kind of spreads uh, to everywhere else. So, yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. And, um, and yes. Uh, and yeah, and you can catch me uh, here uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm also on. Um, See, I'm also on uh, on Instagram, on Twitter, and on um, Facebook, and on, on all the social medias that I can get my hands on. And um, and yeah, so uh, please uh, catch uh, Edwin on the fifth uh, on Jeremy's channel. And I am going to make a surprise. Well, I guess it's not. I'm going to make a. Uh, I don't know if I should. Yeah, 
I should say this, I guess. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to um, see if I, if it's possible I can jump on 80s uh, stream this Saturday. So hopefully you guys can catch that, catch 80s channel. Uh, I hear they get crazy over this. So I'm going to go see firsthand what it's all about. <laughs> and, um, yeah, any, any final words, Edwin, uh, uh, to wrap up? Um, yeah. Uh, first off, uh, thanks for having me on. I uh, always appreciate, you know, all the good people who, uh, who help uh, – spread the news about my projects uh see a bunch in the chat 80s is always awesome odin's yeah. great you know everybody who i haven't caught up with yet i appreciate you guys for tweeting and uh you know supporting uh so yeah uh you know please check out uh the ace volume two if you haven't uh like i said super reasonably priced you get a lot of uh cool stuff with it and i think you know people maybe they're on the fence of stuff like the art and everything is incredible on this one. Like yeah. you, you will not want to miss this. You can catch up very easily. It's just two issues, uh, and you'll get an amazing Joe Bull cover for checking it out. Uh, please subscribe to Bloodbone. Uh, it's uh, coming uh, pretty soonish. Uh, so yeah, October fifth, we're taking pre-orders, and hopefully, you know, like I said, I can get the printer set up and everything, and I can get some proof and maybe start shipping by the end of the year. Is my hope. Sweet. Uh, you know, depending how everything goes, because uh, it's not easy. That's the thing a lot of people know. It a lot of this stuff takes time, especially like even if you do the artwork and everything. You know, there's still like the the pre-print process and stuff, and dealing with printers and shipping and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, uh, it's it's a lot of work. So it does take time. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you for the support, and uh, you know, stay tuned. I uh, still got some more cool stuff coming. So that's awesome. That's awesome to hear, man. Uh, and so, yeah, thank thank you to everybody in the chat. I really appreciate you stopping by and showing support for Edwin. Please continue with the support and uh, back his books. And, um, and yeah, so that, that, that'll be it for today. Um, I'll see you guys later. Uh, thank you very much, Edwin, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, like here, I, it's crazy. Like years, like last year, I was on the other side of the screen listening to you. Now I'm sharing the <laughs> sharing the a show with you, and it's great. So I really appreciate it. And, um, and yeah, so that, that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll catch you in the next show, which will be next week. Oh, and about the show next week, uh, my guest is going to be uh, uh, the telepathic bunny. We're going to talk more about writing. And so, um, and so yeah, so please be sure to uh, catch that. Um, again, it's Wednesdays in the morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is when I do the show. It's one hour before a Don Chin's show. So actually right now, Don Chin should get should be getting started. Be sure to flood his channel. And uh, and that's it. We're, we're, uh, are we fin I'm finished. Uh, I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Have a great one. Peace. And I'm out.